Well, typically theme parks in Disney World are considered very happy places to take family, friends, and loved ones to enjoy themselves in the parks. Ideally, you may pay a pretty penny, especially when you're talking about Disney with the add-ons and things, but either way, it's supposed to be a good time and a place to escape the real world. Well, unfortunately, uh, sometimes people do things because they're people. And we have a story here from the New York Post where it says, what happens in Disney stays in Disney. New York City educrats took own kids to Magic Kingdom on trips meant for homeless students. So we're going to read through this article and get some thoughts on it. So it says here, six Department of Education employees used forged permission slips to take their own kids and grandchildren to Disney World and on other city-funded trips meant for homeless students, investigators allege. The secret perks robbed some of the city's most disadvantaged kids of a chance to enjoy the Magic Kingdom. The trip cost that cost $66,000 for 50 or so adults and kids, a staffer said, and other multiple day trips between 2016 and 2019 to Washington, D.C., New Orleans, Boston, Upstate Rocking Horse Ranch Resort, and Frost Valley YMCA Campground, according to a newly released report by the Special Commissioner Investigation for City Schools. Linda M. Wilson, a Queens supervisor of DOE's Students in Temporary Housing, took her own two daughters on trips and encouraged colleagues to take their sons, daughters, and grandkids, but tried to cover up the shady practice when SCI started asking questions. What happens here stays with us, Wilson allegedly told co-workers. She said everyone should stick to the same story, that we did not take our children on the trip, an employee told the Post. The idea that, like, I'm imagining this is probably, like, a decent amount of people that you would be able to do this and then telling people to be quiet as if you would have, I mean, you just, the odds are you're going to get caught. Like, I just, you know, like, fight club. Like, people eventually are going to talk about it. Like, you're not going to be able to keep this on the hush-hush. Uh, she told us to lie to the investigators. That's not a good sign. While some homeless students attended the trips, the staffers' kids took up valuable spots. One DOE educator, quote, had to beg Wilson to allow him to add two of his students on a trip to Disney World, while Wilson and several staffers she supervised brought family members, the SCI said. Taking money meant for homeless students is extremely inappropriate, said Navid Hassan, a Manhattan public school parent and member of the city's panel for educational policy who advocates for students in need of housing. She says, I'm shocked. Family members are not allowed on field trips, even if the DOE is reimbursed for their expenses, Chancellor's Rules states. Uh, Wilson and other staffers use the names of homeless students to fabricate permission slips, then forge parent signatures on the paperwork, witnesses told investigators. Jeez. Few of the homeless students listed on the paperwork actually attended the trips, a, whistle, a whistleblower did say. At first, Wilson used a DOE contractor to book transportation, hotels, food, and activities. The city paid for the trips with a $300,000 federal grant from the National Center for Homeless Education meant to give kids enrichment and incentives to improve their attendance or academics. And coming to uh, the fact that that's a federal grant, that means those are probably federal charges they're going to have, which those are worse. While Wilson supervised about 20 staffers who worked with students in temporary housing, defined as those living in a shelter, car, park, or abandoned building, that says last year, a record 119,000 New York City students, roughly one in nine kids enrolled in public schools, experienced homelessness. Uh, most out-of-town trips included four to six staff members as chaperones and one or two buses for about 30 kids each, is what it says. The buses alone cost about $2,700 per trip, said the staffer who went to Disney. To, those who went to Disney took the train. Wilson would decide which staff members could attend a trip, assign students to each staff member to chaperone, then replace spots assigned to for those students with staff members' kids. Wilson, whose last salary was $99,726 per year, brought one or two of her daughters on trips. Other staffers accused of bringing family members, uh, they didn't name a lot here, but they also brought family members. Boyd was fired but blamed Wilson. The supervisor in charge not only gave me permission, she encouraged it, and I had no reason to believe that this was against the rules. I mean, you probably did. I'm going to I'm take a wild guess. If you have a trip that's meant for homeless children and you're told you should bring your own kids, you might see something fishy going on. But I suppose in their defense, if your supervisor says to do it, at least you I guess you have some sort of an alibi, at least with that. After completing its probe in January 2023, the SCI recommended Chancellor David Banks terminate all six employees and require them to pay restitution with the amounts to be determined by the DOE. In a settlement last month with the city conflicts of interest board, Jack admitted using slots intended for homeless kids to take her two daughters to see Broadway show Wicked and on a trip to Washington, D.C. in 2016 excursions she was hired to chaperone. Jack agreed to pay the $1,200 fine, 
which they slashed from three thousand dollars the, the approximate cost of the trips due to the financial hardship of losing her job so she got fired for doing this and the penalty was three thousand dollars but she only had to pay a little less than half of that for losing her job for committing the thing that got her fired and fined okay that that makes no sense okay <laughs> so like <laughs> really reached this week wilson flatly denied that her daughters attended trips and that she allowed staff to bring their own children she insisted that doe's checks and balances would have prevented such abuses and called the sci probe a witch hunt wilson 63 said she wasn't terminated but retired from the doe uh, the doe would not say whether anyone was disciplined or paid restitution all staff identified in this report are no longer employed by new york city public schools uh, SCI decided not to refer the cases for criminal prosecution, citing the lack of available documentation. How would you have lack of available documentation? I mean, you're talking about a, an organization that you're going to assume there's paper trails that, that just seems odd to word it that way. Um, I'm going to take a wild guess here that these people are not going to have to pay back restitution. If, if they were, you would assume that there would be something in here saying that, and the fact that they're having no comment on it. And we've seen this numerous times with organizations that really, you know, maybe the head person gets fired and there's really no accountability and these people just move on. Um, it's a pretty disgusting thing to be working for an organization that's supposed to do things and help out homeless kids, especially homeless children who are innocent and being homeless for the, you know, from, from everything that we can tell here, uh, just being in bad situations that trying to do some good things here uh, ends up, you know, you have greed and uh, just selfishness and wanting to do it for yourselves and taking family members on these trips when it was meant for these homeless kids. So I think at the very least, it's uh, it's it's gross. I'm not going to act like it's the worst thing I've ever heard, but it's pretty disgusting to do this. And then it's seemingly, from what I'm seeing here, it doesn't really sound like there's going to be much in terms of punishment or repercussions from this. As again, you have the person that has the $3,000 fine. That's cut more than half because they were fired from their job. That got them the fine in the first place. But, you know, we're going to cut that down. So... I'm going to guess we're not going to hear much else about this in terms of people getting punished, but it does it has made some headlines here. And really, Disney World is just a backdrop to this as this is involving more of a organization that is just being fraudulent, how they're using the money. But anytime that you're involving things of, say, go to Disney World or go to cool places, you know, there's going to be the incentive or uh, perhaps the potential for stuff like this to happen because they're going to say, hey, I want to take my kids to Disney World. And knowing that there were policies against it, they clearly went way out of their way to try and hide their track. So, you know, them saying there's no trail of evidence with this is suspicious, I will say, as you would assume, that'd be pretty easy to track, you know, if this did happen. But either way, um, it's pretty gross. I don't know what else to really say about it other than, uh, I, you know, I do hope that these people are held accountable and they do have to pay back the restitution. And uh, those kids that didn't get to go on these trips do get to go on these trips, potentially. And that, that these issues, you know, maybe they have better people in here and there should be things that prevent this from happening in the future. But either way, not much else I can, I don't know. I got nothing else to really say about it other than it's gross. Doesn't ho I hope it doesn't happen again. I hope the kids that didn't get to go, get to go on a trip and enjoy it. But either way, that's going to be it though for this video. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. As we know, it's the coverage here of Universal Studios, Epic Universe, Disney World, and Pop Culture. But be sure to let us know in the comments what you think about this story. And until next time, we will see you in the parks.